Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, when I first start my truck up, this is my oil pressure. Looks good, huh? It's a typical cold start. Diesel, it's about 35 degrees outside. Now, I'm going to take it for a ride, and uh, you'll see what my oil pressure looks like after that. Get it warmed up. Okay, so here's my oil pressure with the truck is about half warmed up. If I warm it up all the way, it goes down to zero. That beeping you hear is actually my Quadzilla warning me that it's only got seven, eight pounds of oil pressure. Uh, Dodge says that this should have 10 pounds at idle at bare minimum and 20 pounds at a thousand, or I'm sorry, at 2,000 RPMs. Now that's bare minimum. So I'm below the bare minimum. And like I say, if I let it warm up all the way and it's just an idle, it will go down to zero. Now, if I give it a little bit of gas, you know, it'll go up and it'll be reasonable. Um, so anyway, we're going to diagnose this problem and we're going to figure out what's going on and fix it. So stay tuned. Okay, so you're going to have to excuse my engine. It's dirtier than crap and it's cold outside. I don't feel like cleaning it up. Anyway, uh, first thing you need to check is your oil. Make sure you got the proper amount of oil. Make sure you've done all your scheduled oil changes like you should. Make sure you're running the proper oil. Uh, next thing you look for in the oil is if it's over full. If you're getting oil from somewhere, uh, it does occasionally happen the injector pump the front seal on it will blow out and it'll dump fuel in your oil and this is a very bad thing you don't want to drive it that way um, but you should be able to tell that if your oil is over full if you're getting oil from somewhere you didn't put it in there you know it's coming from somewhere now, I've heard people say injectors leaky injectors can also add it but I don't necessarily buy into that because the injector doesn't dump out fuel when it's off and when it's on you know it's burning fuel when injector goes bad it burns a hole in your piston it doesn't dump fuel in your oil I mean the amount of fuel it would take to dilute all that oil is quite a bit one other thing you can look for is if you have oil in your radiator, you can look down in your uh, overflow tank in your radiator. If you have oil in there, there is an oil cooler that is bolted on your oil filter, which we're going to get to next, um, that has been known to leak occasionally. It's not a very common thing, but they can leak and then the oil will mix with your antifreeze, vice versa. Um, so anyway, you know, you need to check those things first. It's the easiest thing to do. Now, what I did is I thought, and I've done this in the past, I said, well, I'll just stick a new oil pressure sending unit on it to rule that out. You know, 20, 30 bucks. But for some reason, Dodge has different ones for different vehicles. Now, when I checked mine, they want over $200, and that's aftermarket for the oil sending unit. So what I did is I picked me up a mechanical oil pressure switch, oil pressure gauge from AutoZone. And I'm just going to, you know, $17, so I figured that's a good test thing. So I'm just going to stick it on there. I already have a, a T in here. Now, you probably have a plug unless you have compound turbos or something right there. Um, but I have that outlet to, to oil my second turbo. I have compounds on here So I already got a T there So I'm just going to T into there and hook up the mechanical gauge and verify that they're saying the same thing Because if it is just a sending unit, then I just need to replace that But anyway that option will give me uh, You know verify that my gauges are correct now the tuner is just picking up the signal from the computer. So whatever the computer says, my computer's just telling me the actual numbers for it instead of a um, gauge like you typically have for your oil pressure on the Dodge. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hook up my mechanical oil, $17 oil pressure gauge, and I'm going to verify it to the inside and we'll see how that, what's going on. 
Okay, so the oil's cooled off a little bit, so I got oil pressure again. Um, my tuner's telling me 11, 12, 11. You know, that's not ideal oil pressure. I guess that's acceptable, but it's still cold. 10, when it gets hot, you know, then it goes down even more. So let's go out and check our mechanical oil pressure gauge and see what we got. Okay, so we got 20, which is nice. So, now we can move on from there. Okay, so I'm not completely convinced that it's primarily the uh, sending unit. Um, i explain why. My truck has 400 and almost 90,000 miles on it. In the back of the fuel filter housing, there is this little thing that's called a pressure relief, or sometimes they even call it a filter, oil filter bypass. And you can see it's got a Teflon seat in there. Now, I picked up one of these ahead of time, uh, thinking that might be what it is. So I'm going to pull the full oil filter housing off and change this as a maintenance type thing anyway, since it's got so many miles on it. Now, um, we'll be able to see if it's messed up when we take it out of there. Uh, but at any rate, the oil pressure I'm getting here is showing me that I got oil pressure. But it could still be bypassing. If you wanted to see what's actually getting sent to your engine, your oil sending unit is located under your injector pump. So it's kind of a pain to get to is the reason I'm doing this. And I figure with 490000 you know, it's not going to hurt to change this thing anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the antifreeze out of it um, because it is connected to the oil cooler too. And then I'm going to take the fuel filter assembly housing off. We just unscrew the oil filter. You know, get crap out of your way so you can work. Take your turbo lines loose and then follow the bolts all the way around and take them out. And that should come off. Now, I can tell you, I bought this from Dodge. This is like $30 from Dodge. And I've seen them on the internet cheaper. I don't know if there's any difference. But Dodge wanted like over $100 for the gaskets. And I found them on the internet for like 40 bucks. She will need new gaskets for it. Uh, but anyway, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to take the uh, antifreeze out. We're going to take that assembly off. And then we'll take a look at this thing and see if it's bad or if we can see that it's bad or anything like that. Okay, so I got it off. Now, here's the reason I told you to take out your antifreeze. That right there, what you see is the oil cooler. Okay, and that protrudes into the block. Now, if you're lucky like me, you know, it looks like it's going to sit there. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to bolt back over top of it. If you're particular, you know, go ahead and pop it off, clean it up, and put the other gasket on the inside. There's two gaskets, and I bought both of them, but it, I'm kind of happy mine just sat there because now I'll just put the oil cooler back on. Now, what I did was... I uh, popped this thing out, and it really doesn't look bad. I mean, it's bent because I pried it out, but it may may be that the spring is just weak. Now, it, you know, it's a little, little bit of your choice. What I did is I figured the truck's got 490,000 miles on it. It don't owe me nothing. You know, I have rebuilt the engine, but these components are all original. So I bought a new filter housing. Now they're about $80 on the internet. I don't know what Dodge wants for them. The only thing I can see is if you look in the old one, I don't know if you can see it's clear how far it's worn here and the new one is not worn. Um, again, that's got a big wear spot in it and this one does not. Now what that 
goes is there's one more component to it, which is right here. Now you have this bolt sticking right down the top of your filter. It's got a big spring on there. And this is another, depending on what you want to call it, oil bypass or uh, pressure relief. But you just want to make sure that slides up and down easy, what this does. And then the bolt goes right on top of it. Uh, if you opt to buy a new uh, housing, like I say, they're not terribly expensive. Um, then, of course, you got to put all that stuff on your new housing. But that's where it seats right down there. And like I say, the old one <clears throat> does have quite a groove worn in it. Now, I don't know that that's enough to do anything. But like I say, at 490000 the thing doesn't owe me nothing. I have heard of them cracking before. Um, I do know that this part is obsolete through Dodge. You know, you may be able to find it somewhere else. But your uh, pressure relief thing just goes right here in the back. So, it builds up pressure, it bypasses, comes back through the, just keeps making a circle in here. And it won't go into the engine. That's to relieve if there's too much pressure. So, of course, I'm going to stick the new one back in here. I'm going to put my pieces back on here with my new filter, clean everything up, and I'm going to stick this back on. Um, pretty straightforward. Just put the bolts in, tighten them up. They're all number 10 bolts. And hook up my turbo lines, and we'll see what kind of results we get after that. Okay, I just want to point out a couple things. This is the old one, but I should have mentioned before, this thing goes in there, and it's got to be pressed or tapped down inside. Um, if you just take a socket that'll fit on the outside rim and tap it lightly, it goes right in. But it needs to go down inside there. You'll see when you take the old one out, but just take note of it. Um, when we were talking about the gaskets before, I didn't even realize I ordered this on the internet. This is why I hate dealers sometimes. Genuine Cummings Part. I paid $40 for two gaskets. The dealer wanted 150 something, three, four, whatever it was, for the same gaskets. Now tell me, why? Why can't they just sell them for something reasonable? Anyway, another thing I'd like to point out is, you see this has antifreeze in it. What I do is, there's three bolts holding your top thing on to get to your thermostat, top horn. When you drain it, it takes forever. But once it drains down to this point, if you take this loose and pop out the thermostat, it'll, it'll drain the antifreeze out fast. When I fill it, I fill through the block. Now, I know that block's full of antifreeze when I start it up. So... The radiator will be full to that level, and then all I have to do is tap off the, the radiator. But if you fill through the radiator, then it's got to seep through the uh, seep through your thermostat because your thermostat's going to be closed, obviously, because the antifreeze is cold. So that's why I always fill it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back on, and I'm going to start it up, take it for a ride, and then I'm going to show you if there's any improvement or if it's still the same. And we'll know a little bit more. The only other possible thing it could be is an oil pump. And I've had an oil pump go bad on a truck like this before, a different truck. And when they go bad, they 99 times out of 100, they just stop working. They don't half work. So... You know, I see a lot of people say, oh, maybe it's an oil pump. It's not pumping enough. You know, first thing people say, but not always because I've seen them go bad and, the, and they just stop working. They don't, you know, they usually come apart. So they're a pretty simple thing. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. So I'm going to stick this radiator thing back on, elbow, finish the radiator up, and we'll get it warmed up and we'll see where we're at. So, looks like we fixed our problem. Um, that looks like pretty decent idle oil pressure. This is saying, you know, 18, 19, 18, 19, which is acceptable. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just get a sending unit anyway and stick in there. I know it's 200 bucks, but like I say, with an engine that's almost 500,000 miles on it, you know, I don't want to complain too much. 
anyway, I hope this can help you with your problems. And uh, you know, be sure to take a look. I got a lot of other Dodge uh, Cummings videos. Also have some BMW videos if you like those too. Anyway, you have a nice day and thank you for watching.